Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name is Avini Aloma from La Rive International. I'm the managing director. Uh, and we're also the initiator of uh, Hortitech India. Welcome today for our uh, third and final webinar from Hortitech India um, with uh, the focus, the journey from plan to plate. Um, today, we will guide you through uh, uh the, the theme uh, food safety and plan management within the supply chain before we start we would really want to know who is attending this webinar so uh we have a poll uh, and we first of all we would also like to know um if this is your first time your second time or your third time that you're attending this webinar so please let us know, is this, uh, have you followed? Um, if you followed webinar one, webinar two, is this your third one, then enter webinar three. Have you followed already webinar one and webinar two, then enter the fourth uh, number, or have you followed all the webinars, including today? So please let us know, is this, um, is this the first time, then click webinar three. Is this your second time, then just click webinar one or webinar two. If you followed already webinar two, webinar three, or all, please, please enter in the poll. Iris, can we see the results? Okay, so Sid has followed uh, all webinars, 6% webinar one and three. We have 50 new entities for these for today. 25% has followed webinar one and webinar two, 13%. Interesting. Well, welcome everybody. So as said, I'm Davinia Lama. We are the coordinator of the Hortitech India Consortium an initiative which started in 2017. Before we go to the speakers of today, I would like to let you know what we're going to talk about. Um, today, we're going to provide you insights uh, into the importance of high quality seeds in relation to food safety. We're going to talk about breeding and culture practices. Um, we're going to talk about alternative crop protection solutions to enhance food safety and, and uh, mitigate, uh, mitigate risks. And um, also going to look at food safety in relation to the supply chain. We're also very interested to, to, to learn who you are. Are you, are you a grower? Are you a wholesaler, retailer or trader? Are you a knowledge or training institute? Are you a service provider? Or doesn't the above options fit your profile? Then please click other. Very interested to see who we have uh, uh, as attendees today listening to this webinar. Okay, Iris. Okay, 15% of you are growers, 5% wholesale retail trader, we have 30% knowledge of training institutes, 15% uh, service providers, and 35% other. Well, welcome. Who do we have uh, today uh, on the program? Um, we have two very interesting speakers, um, Uday Bhatt from uh, Corporate India, Ajit Kumar from Rijksland India, uh, and our moderators of today are Mark de Ruiter and, and Daniel Magwebe. But first, a short introduction about Hortitech India. Uh, what, is, what is Hortitech India? It's a public-private consortium uh, consisting of innovative Dutch partners, um, operating in the horticulture sector with the aim to, to, uh, to uh, provide knowledge and technology solutions uh, for greenhouse cultivation of fruits and vegetables in India. 
And we want to show to you that investments in Dutch technology is commercial viable. So we have a group of different partners and all together we can come up with um, complete solutions to help you um, yeah, develop uh, technologies and, and help you uh, further um, yeah, explore possibilities in the horticulture sector. So today we also have Rex Spaan as a speaker. They will introduce themselves later on today. The focus is in vegetable breeding. Same counts for Koppert. Uday will present himself, but Koppert is focused on biological crop protection. Then we have Tech Advice Group. This is, a, this is like a consultant who can design uh, and supervise and construct greenhouse projects. They have a lot of reference all over the world. They also have a, a project uh, made for Bayer in, in India. Twin Shields is also an interesting company who also realizes complex greenhouse horticulture projects. They have an example project, project in Noida uh, where they built, built a glass greenhouse. Um, they have also constructed a holy house in Tumkur, Bangalore. Uh, so they have two reference projects in India. Um, it's a company that can help you further from the design all the way till realizing your horticulture project. Then we have Dutch Planting. And Dutch Planting also presented themselves during the webinar from last week. Um, they are a company focusing on cocoa substrates. Mo mainly, mainly, uh, mainly they, at the moment, they, they, they export their products from India to Europe. But due to uh, being part of the Wordstick India Consortium, they also now have some projects in India. And we really hope that um, their presence in India will become stronger. Uh, due to the fact that their solutions are really very important for food safety, which we also addressed in the seminar, in the webinar last week. Then we have Hogendor. This is a company who, who uh, focuses on climate control, energy management and water management. Um, their IT solutions help you to control your greenhouse. Swenson, very interesting and important company who provides a climate screen solutions. Uh, this way you can control humidity, you can control temperature and UV radiation in your greenhouse. Then we have Hendik, which is all about water storage, important uh, to, to, to store uh, rainwater, but also water uh, from and inside the, the greenhouse company can read that it has a lot of reference projects in India um, and it can really help you to solve your water storage um, um, solutions or challenges. Then of course we have our knowledge institutes. Um, Mark and Daniel are also there uh, for you today. Lentis is, is, uh, is, a, is an institute uh, which focuses on pre-vocational second, uh, secondary education. A um, lot of expertise in the horticulture sector. And then we have Van Hal Laverstein, University of Applied Sciences. It's an international green knowledge institute. Um, they are also very active in India, together with their local partner in Baramati, uh, named Agriculture College of Baramati. And also they have reference projects in horticulture in Baramati. Well, this is the, an example that the, uh, the, 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 the knowledge and the uh, technology from the parts of Wordtech India have built. Uh, it's a demonstration greenhouse in Tumkur, Bangalore. Uh, it's located at the food park. Um, if you're interested to, to, to have a look, please contact us and we can see what we can do for you. It has, for example, a climate computer of Hovendor inside. It has the screens of Swenson, uh, but also uh, crops, from, uh, from, from Rijkswaan, crop protection from, from Colbert, and the design is being made by uh, Twin Shields. Um, so please contact us if you want to know more. Another short poll question before we go uh, to introduce uh, the speakers of today. We would like to know from which area you're from. Are you from India? Then please click the first one. 
Are you from Asia? So excluding India. Are you from Europe? Are you from America, Africa? Or are you from the Americas? Please let us know from which part of the world you're coming from. Ah, 76% comes from India. Good, good to have you all in the webinar again. Asia 10%, Europe 10%, Africa 10%, and nobody comes from the Americas. Please continue, Iris. So as you said, if you want to know more about this one consortium, uh, about certain companies, please send an email to hortitechindia at lareef.com, uh, refer to me or Iris, and we will help you further to connect you to the right company and see if they can help you with the challenges or with the investment ideas that you have uh, for this sector. Okay, I think it's time to introduce Daniel. Daniel, the moderator of today together with Mark. Daniel McLeaver, can I uh, give the word to you? Uh, thank you very much, Davinia, for such a wonderful overview on the webinars, as well as an overview on um, Hototech India. Um, ladies and gentlemen uh, who are attending uh, the webinars for today, I would like to welcome you all. Thank you very much uh, for joining us for this webinar. Uh, I think we have walked the journey from the plate, uh, from the plant all the way to the plate. And I think today it is only befitting that we are joined by uh, two big companies uh, involved in horticulture. Uh, today we are joined by uh, Udai Bhatt as well as Ajit uh, Bishio. Uh, he's, they are, these gentlemen are joining us today for the webinar. And uh, I think uh, if we talk about crop protection and plant protection, I think we cannot run away from the name COPET, COPET Biological Systems. And I think today to give us uh, a wonderful presentation, we are joined by Udai Bhatt. Uh, Udai, you have, uh, you have a lot of experience in the world of uh, horticulture. I think you started uh, with your education in horticulture and then you went further to have a postgrad in horticulture. You have worked in landscape as well as uh, horticulture. Uh, in crop protection uh, in 2007, where you worked in Kenya. And then you joined COPET in the year 2011. And from then, you have risen in the ranks of COPET until you are now the director of COPET India. Uh, in the last weeks, Udai, we have uh, discussed about food safety, what it means to have safe food on your plate. Uh, but now we would like to know more from you as well, as well as the attendees, they would like to find out a bit more. Uh, what does it mean to produce safe food? How can you have the right crop protection that is necessary uh, to make sure that you consume safe food? What kind of pro crop protection technologies would you advise? I would like to give the word to you, Udai, to present uh, to, to the attendees as well as to everyone who's here. Uh, Udai, I hand over to you. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Daniel. Uh, thank you, Divinia, for uh, this wonderful uh, setup for presenting on uh, food safety. In fact, uh, uh, the background, the picture, the background is Corporate Biological Systems Headquarters in the Netherlands. It's in uh, Rotterdam, uh, in a place called Berkel and Roden Rise. And I will take you through the steps and processes we are following to focus on food safety. Next slide, please. Can do it. Yeah, there is a video now. Which is on uh, the present situation globally and how we overcome this by good agriculture practices, sustainable agriculture practices. It's taking but
it seems that we've lost some connection uh, with uh, the main uh, office. So let's, uh, yes, there we are, we are back. Okay, there it is, excellent. Yeah, uh, this movie was uh, trying to sum up uh, where we are at the moment and you know, what are the steps uh, which are being taken by copper to really you know mitigate uh, the further uh, damage uh, how to control it basically you know sustainable agriculture which uh, we should uh, talk of for food safety so to tell you in brief uh, copper is a family company established in 1967 we are a 50 years old family company market leaders in biological crop protection and natural pollination and uh, now we have more holistic approach to plant health management and crop health management as compared to what we started in the beginning globally we are uh, selling our produce products in about 130 countries in the world both pollinators our beneficial insects our um, soil improvers uh, various uh, bio pesticides various pest monitoring systems and all and uh, we have about 30 subsidiaries uh, worldwide in india we established in the year 2012 in bangalore think yeah the mission of copper i think there's some problem can we go to the next slide yeah i will go to the next slides yeah yeah Next one, yeah. Uh, the mission of copper, copper biological system contributes to better health of the people and the planet. In partnership with nature, we make agriculture healthier, safer, and more productive. We provide an integrated system of specialist knowledge and natural safe solutions that improve crop health, resilience, and production. I mean, this is directly related to food safety, yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah, what are our core discipline? The main uh, area of interest from copper is biological control. You know, we started off in 1967 identifying and supporting uh, red spider mite control using Phytocillus persimilis. That was the beginning of our journey. And then uh, we had uh, natural pollination that was in the 88 using uh, bumblebee as pollinator and then we also looked at resilient growth uh, after that basically to improve the soil health management by using microbial based products and uh, other uh, biostimulant uh, product which is again more for open agriculture and also for the greenhouse crop biological control and natural pollination mainly focus in the greenhouse and also in the open but uh, resilient growth is more in the open and then we also suggest people to use pest monitoring system and mass starting system. This helps in minimizing use of uh, uh, insecticides, pesticides, and we will be able to control uh, these uh, diseases or pests in spots. So holistic approach is necessary for a sustainable crop management. That's our, uh, these are our core disciplines. Next slide. Food safety, which is an important topic, uh, not only for us, uh, for uh, all uh, the people in this planet. Basically, you know, uh, we have a limited area of land. And within that limited area, we need to produce maximum. And the maximum what we produce, it should be safe. Because uh, in Europe and all, there are very stringent rules wherein, you know, the supermarkets, uh, do not accept uh, products with high MRLs. And that concept is also catching up in India uh, nowadays. So the basic thing is 
use maximum natural solution both as nutrition and also pest and disease control where necessary use uh, fertilizers or plant protection chemicals safe chemicals and overuse of uh, chemicals are sometimes contraproductive they are not helping us but they can have a negative impact next slide uh, so for now we will skip the video please watch us on youtube but we had some problems okay but this video was interesting on food safety so challenges uh, to food safety uh, change in climatic condition changing farming system and supply chain new and emerging diseases and pests in india you you got this uh, tuta absoluta which was not there for uh, before uh, five years you know it has come into india about five to six years back In the last couple of years we are also seeing a fall army worm so these are new challenges which are affecting the food safety and uh, in order to control them we are using excessive chemicals which are not really helping we should look at alternatives changes in consumer habits and preferences i mean earlier the food consumed was more local but now due to uh, logistic uh, availability and other things we get food from various parts of the world so when we get them you know we also have the possibility of getting you know they have to be preserved and when they come with the proper preservative they can also uh, have challenges in food safety the pesticide application you know there are mixtures of pesticides which are used to control some certain of the pests or diseases which are not controlled with one single application or there are a lot of unregistered pesticides pesticide resistance mrls all these are challenges uh, to food safety in uh, our period next slide further you also have challenges in residue management when it comes to export of produce from india there has been uh, challenges uh, in exporting uh, chilies uh, to uh, uk there has been challenges in exporting mango to uh, us there has been challenges in exporting uh, grapes uh, to europe all pesticide residue so you know there these europe and other developed countries they are very stringent and the mrls are very strict so we need to adapt to the requirement we need to minimize use of harsh chemicals excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers is one of the challenges to food safety counterfeit pesticides of course we need to have solutions to this also but the solutions are in having more and more of bio products registration of these bio products bio pesticides there are also a lot of hurdles and challenges which i think needs to be addressed by uh, the competent authorities this is again a challenge of import permits we have got uh, possibility of importing nine beneficial insects into india for managing uh, sucking pests but of course there are challenges in them i'll come on that uh, this topic later on and creation of awareness of uh, the alternatives we need to have a lot of awareness creation program to the farmer group to the educational institution the agriculture universities and also uh, the other extension uh, workers about uh, these uh, products next slide yeah steps to achieve food safety in production so uh, there are few uh, steps which uh, we should all adopt uh, to come up to level that's basically implementing the safety in food production with new technologies of biocontrol which we are going to discuss uh, further uh, slides encourage sustainable farming practices earlier it was only integrated pest management then it was integrated disease management then it was it is now integrated crop management it includes integrated pest management ipm idm integrated nutrient management so totally it's called as integrated crop management so that should be the aim to achieve food safety and promoting a system of safe farming methods with minimal pesticide use uh, which i think uh, even though india is not amongst the top pesticide consumer in the world but in crops which are very intensive we really apply a uh, high quantity of pesticide so i think we should uh, look at uh, safe pesticides there 
adopt practices which conserves the natural flora and fauna all these natural enemies which we are discussing now after the slides they are available in nature but we are killing them or suppressing them by excessive use of chemicals so preserve nature that will have solutions to the problems of pests and diseases traceability of product is also very important for food safety from right from sowing till final end product on the plate we should know each step which the product has gone through or the the end product that is the fruits or vegetables or waste or uh, any other uh, consumable product then knowledge sharing is very important uh, which i think in europe mainly in greenhouses uh, they have this uh, every weekend they meet they discuss about the diseases and pests i think uh, the same uh, should be followed and adopted in india for uh, developing uh, safe uh, practices next slide yeah the there's a poll question now do you feel that biological crop protection is one of the means to achieve food safety in the present scenario please select yes or no yeah 87% is yes that's fantastic i think uh, we would have an interesting discussion uh, in the coming in the future slides thank you next slide yeah i mean to sum up what uh, we discussed till now is you know there are two extremes one is using pesticides excessively which leads to the left higher lands on pesticides and lower lands on natural solutions the extreme right tells us higher lands on natural solutions and lower lands on chemical pesticide it's a total system management wherein uh, we use uh, less and less of chemical pesticides we use more and more of uh, environmental friendly bio control agents bio pesticides and uh, that's uh, the future next slide yeah ipm the answer to pesticide problems basically when you use excessive pesticides they leave lost lot of residues on the crop if they are harsh chemical or harmful pesticides and this affects directly the food safety the food which we consume is affected safety of the workers is also compromised emission to the environment is also one of the effects excessive or regular use without maintaining proper spray interval leads to resistance of uh, these pesticides to the insect so leading to this you know many countries there has been increasing ban of harsh chemicals or harmful pesticides in fact in india recently in june about 27 pesticides have been uh, uh, put on the uh, no go list you know there is still discussions on that and uh, more and more retailers and growers are looking for safe produce anything for exports the mrls is critical so indian government is also looking at it and is taking it very seriously and we have some excellent solutions to overcome these problems next slide yeah what is integrated pest management integrated pest management is combination of methods to prevent and control pests in the safest possible way prevention is better than cure that is what uh, everyone tells us and uh, that's why we should look at prevention as our first uh, option i mean when you are looking at greenhouses the greenhouse hygiene is spoken very high you know you should have a hygienic uh, thing in the greenhouse no weeds no uh, entry to unknown people and you know have a clean uh, shade net exclusion that's uh, that comes under exclusion don't allow the outside insects to come in maintain as clean and as hygienic as possible if you have uh, dead debris or uh, you know some disease uh, caused uh, plant debris please take them out all these things come under that and healthy plants 
resistant varieties going for more and more resistant varieties i think my colleague in rexwan would be able to explain more on that biostimulant there are a lot of biostimulants now it's a topic of the day which is being discussed this helps in building up the resistance within the plants you know it's like uh, building the immunity of the plant that is prevention that comes under prevention management mechanical and cultural practices like you know you have got too much of caterpillar damage on your crop one of the options is collect them and pick them and uh, take them off cultural practices is removing weeds and other things which act as an alternate host to the pest monitoring which uh, is of uh, paramount importance is scouting and having traps you know yellow traps blue traps fruit traps and many other things wherein you can identify which are the hotspots of uh, these pests and take a spot control of uh, these particular pests or diseases instead of spraying the entire greenhouse or the entire area which uh, before it spreads so you can also use it for monitoring you can also use it for trapping and then comes control in control you have biological control which should be your first priority and when you need another combination you should use chemical control as your last resort last resort in the in the what i mean is use compatible chemicals use soft chemicals use those chemicals which do not have long uh stay or long uh, waiting period in the crop that's that's very important next slide sorry we finished this slide next yeah so one of the cornerstone of uh, ipm is biological uh, control biological control means release of natural enemies to control pests natural enemies are beneficial organisms parasites predators bugs parasitic nematodes bacteria and fungi one thing here i would like to explain is one insect feeds on another insect they do not feed on the crop so this is one thing which i wanted to highlight and biocontrol is a system it's not that one is to one there may be one or two Uh, insects which are beneficial insects which can feed on different stages of the pest so it's a system and it's a toolbox for all pests necessary this particular uh, biological control is very commonly practiced in greenhouse crops across the world in india it's still uh, at a infancy stage or a beginning stage this is a common practice in greenhouse industry and it's a cornerstone of integrated pest management next slide yeah some of the approved natural enemies list in india we started this in 2010 in fact uh, namdaris were the first uh, company which shown interest in this and they imported they brought the import permits directly and then we started off in 2010 technically in india and uh, at this moment we have uh, approved list of nine beneficial insects there are predatory mites parasitic wasps and the predatory bugs they are for thrips mites white fly aphids leaf miners and uh, uh, they have been successfully used in different greenhouses across the country this list is approved by directorate of plant protection quarantine and storage after thorough environmental risk assessment by national bureau of agricultural insect resources at bangalore next slide yeah i am going through few slides uh, wherein uh, we have done uh, successful uh, trials of these products first thing is on the strawberry crop uh, in pune wherein uh, for control of red spider mites thrips and aphids a uh, release of amlicious whiskey neocelis californicus phytocelis persimilis and aphidias coldermani were done the residue free crop was harvested which was of export quality next slide similarly uh, one of our largest uh, supplier of strawberry mother plants uh, is kf bio plants they they supply strawberry plants across uh, india 
and they have mother plants which is uh, imported from us and then uh, they had problem of spider mites and to control spider mites we have used neosilus californicus and phytocilus persimilis consistently and then uh, they are very happy with uh, the results in fact uh, in uh, monsanto research center at bangalore uh, they have r and d done for uh, May seeds, corn seeds, and uh, they had problems of uh, spider mites and broad mites, and uh, we had to release Amnesia swisky, Neosilus californicus, Phytocilus persimilis, and uh, the results uh, were successful. Next slide. These are commercial uh, greenhouse farms in Gujarat and Telangana, wherein. Uh, in normal uh, common common pest are thrips red spider mites white flies and aphids and uh, we had to release a combination of different beneficial insects to manage them successfully next slide yeah this is uh, one of the pioneer project in india of namdaris uh, it's in uh, uh, they have the project both in uti and also in uh, bidhi near Bangalore and uh, what we have seen is uh, consistently uh, they had problems of thrips, red spider mite, white fly and aphids and by using our beneficial insects uh, they were able to harvest residue free chilies and uh, the natural balance uh, was seen. After a few years we could see uh, the uh, aphidias colimani uh, in uh, their uh, greenhouse in uh, Uti. So nature, restor restoration of uh, the beneficial insects in nature. And uh, they had little bit of lesser incidence of uh, viral diseases because uh, thrips were controlled. Next, next talk, next uh, slide. Yeah. So we have a comparison of uh, one season trial in uh, Chile. They had uh, two greenhouses. One they used chemicals, the other one they used IPM with chemicals. With chemicals in the sense they are all compatible chemicals which uh, we recommend. It's on our website. And then uh, it's used, the com compatible chemicals or mild chemicals are used before the flowering of the crop. And uh, what we see is, uh, the application of chemicals in this greenhouse is about 5%. The manpower, extra manpower used in chemical greenhouse is about 50 people. And they are also exposed to uh, chemicals. That's one thing. And then the yield in case of uh, IPM greenhouse is about 20% higher because we could take the crop four weeks more in IPM greenhouse as compared to chemical greenhouse. The quality of air produce was also about 10% higher. And overall, it is safe to the environment. So this was one of the successful projects uh, which we did uh, in Namdari way back in 2012. And uh, we had a um, I mean, uh, visit to the farm for all uh, the growers, the officials. And uh, based on this, we started uh, doing in other projects. Next slide. Uh, IPM in tomato, I am also now taking up other products which uh, we are using. The mass trapping of uh, Tuta absoluta, which has become a big menace in uh, uh, many tomato growing belts across the country. We use pheromone traps. You know, these pheromones attract the uh, male insects, male uh, Tuta absoluta, and then uh, they are trapped in this water trap. So in a water trap, you also use a surfactant so that they get uh, stuck. But the challenge again is the complete toolbox, as we were talking of earlier, is not there for uh, tomatoes uh, in India. Basically, we need to use the Eritomocerus eremicus also to control white fly in the greenhouse. And we need to use bumblebee to enhance the pollination. In Europe, 95% of the greenhouses which are there uh, cultivating tomatoes in the greenhouse, they use bumblebee for pollination. It increases the yield by about 15 to 20 percent. Next slide. 
Yeah, what lessons have we learned in the last eight years? Uh, is you know the promising results in sweet pepper, chili, strawberry, corn, no negative effect reported, considerable reduction in pesticide use, better quality products, safer products, improved market value. This has already been shown in the previous slides, but we still have challenges. Next slide. Yeah, now we have a poll. Do we need biological control as a tool in pest and disease management in horticulture? Based on all the slides you have seen, I need your uh, sincere opinion. Thank you. It's wonderful. I think uh, uh, all are with us. You know, 93% is a good score. Thank you so much. We will help each other. So the challenge is now IPM is not taken widely yet because awareness of the growers is still less. There is huge challenge on import duty. These particular products are classified under animals in the import list, customs. And it has about 37% import duty. And recently, since 2017, they have added one more challenge, which is called as inspection fee. This inspection fee works out to about 295%. I mean, uh, on a rupee basis, initially in 2017, they started with 1.5 lakhs import duty or inspection fee, sorry, for uh, one acre. If you want to use beneficial insects, you need about half a million beneficial insects, 500,000. For 500,000, you need to invest 1.5 lakhs. On discussing with government, they have reduced it to 75,000 now, which I think we are still talking to them because farmers cannot pay and as a company we cannot afford that and that's the reason there is a temporary halt and discussions with the government officials to help us in coming over this so that we spread this good system for food safety to the growers in india again there is in uncertainty about permits these have been tested multi location in india these have been tested across the globe this has been tested for more than 150 years and there has not been a single incidence wherein these beneficial insects have caused harm to plants and uh, the government support is required to really overcome these challenges. They need to help us through their KVKs, through their agriculture universities, through their uh, agriculture departments in creating awareness to the growers they need to really give subsidies or reduce import duty and inspection fee for a few years like for irrigation when we started with the, the drip irrigation huge subsidies are given to for farmers to adopt this new system so this particular new system is environmental friendly system it's helping you as a road to food safety so i think we need participation of the government there and long-term permits have to be given world over when the products are tested they give import permits for a five years or a 10 years period. But here, every year we need to renew our import permit, which is a challenge uh, for us. And we cannot go and adopt this at uh, the grower's place because grower doesn't know the next crop, whether copper will be able to supply these beneficial insects. Support for full package is definitely necessary if we have to have a proper biological control. Next slide. Yeah, ah, there's an interesting thing is bumblebees uh, for natural poll pollination. You know, world over, we are selling more than 1 million hives. This particular uh, thing is a uh, boon to some of the growers, wherein they have seen in increase in yield, better pollination, and the increase in yield is to the tune of uh, 15 to 30 percent. Advantage of bumblebee is no labor required, continuous pollination, better fruit setting, higher quality of the produce, better shape, higher average fruit weight, 
better taste, higher vitamin contents. You would have noticed whenever there are uh, tomato photos of uh, Europe or America or various other developed part of the world, you will see how uniform they are. It is basically these bumblebees which is doing the work. In India, you, you get all shapes, size of uh, fruits. And when the second grade or uh, the local grade are much higher in India, because you know pollination is not complete. Pollination is uh, not done properly in uh, tomatoes. Next slide, please. Yeah, why bumblebee? The advantages of using bumblebee over honeybees. Of course, you know in India we have uh, thing that yeah honeybee also gives honey, while bumblebee doesn't give honey. Bumblebee is a pollinating bee. Honeybee is mainly to uh, collect honey. When you are looking at uh, pollination as your need, you have to go to the professional. The professional here is bumblebee. We don't say that don't use honeybee. You should use honeybee, but where you need thousands of honeybees, you need few hundreds of bumblebees. It does two and a half times, 2.7 times more pollen transfer than honeybee. And its flower visitation, the number of visits to a flower is much more, one and a half times to two and a half times more than honeybees. It's active from early morning till late evening. It works both indoors and outdoors. We use it mainly in outdoors for berries and a few other nuts and many of the fruit crops also. And it's active for a wide temperature range, you know, even uh, more than 8 degrees to up to 35 degrees, it, uh, it can be used. Of course, in India, you would say we go up to 45 degrees. There are also way how we manage it, which I think uh, we can discuss one-to-one uh, -one later also. And uh, we are using this in Saudi Arabia also, I mean, uh, the hottest uh, part of uh, the world. Uh, it's a very good cross-pollinator. So these are some of the advantages of bumblebees. In fact, in India, we have still not importing uh, this because uh, the government has not given any import permit for this. Next slide. Now, the poll is, I just uh, took two uh, slides on uh, honeybee, on bumblebee, because, you know, bumblebee, we still don't have it in India. But do you consider pollination as a limiting factor in the productivity of your crop and would you like to enhance pollination with bumblebee? They, we have got a lot of inquiries from apple growers, berry growers, greenhouse growers and all. We request your answer now. Excellent. I mean, growers are on our side. I think uh, we should work together to convince or uh, debate with the government why we need this, how safe are they. We have done our part. We need you also to help us. Next slide. Yeah, some of the pest monitoring systems, uh, which I think uh, is very important. This is widely used in the greenhouses, both in India and abroad, which also, there are also some which are used in the open field, like horrible traps, blue traps, yellow traps, uh, fruit fly traps, delta traps, funnel traps, water traps. And there are many more like this, you know. Uh, the awareness creation of this has to increase. In fact, they are being used now. Farmers are aware. We need to expand this particular market. When we use more of this, we minimize use of pesticide. When we minimize the uh, use of uh, pesticides, we are leading to food safety. Next one. Yeah, I am going through some of the slides now, three or four uh, products which uh, are also helping us in uh, um, going towards food safety or minimizing use of fertilizers and chemicals. One such product is Vichy Roots Biofertilizer. This is a research product from uh, Coppert, Netherlands. Uh, and then uh, once uh, we did multi-location trials in India, successful, we are at this moment manufacturing them in India. 
because this, this is a volume business and uh, we are able to cater to the requirement of uh, many farmers for a soil improver this is basically a registered product as phosphate solubilizing bacteria we have a unique selling proposition in this as silicate solubilizing bacteria silicate solubilizing bacteria helps in uh, biotic and abiotic stress tolerance it also has many other uh, microbes in it which comes under uh, this uh, soil probiotic consortium and to feed this uh, uh, microbes we have prebiotic which includes humic acid fulvic acid seaweed extract organic carbon ascorbic acid and many more other things uh, which uh, is helpful and moisture is one of the critical uh, success factor for uh, sporulation of these uh, microbes when they are applied in the soil we advocate 3 to 6 kg per acre and uh, 3 kg for annual crops and 6 kg for perennial crops or fruit crops per year and uh, in nursery we suggest uh, uh, powder formulation which is called which is sp 1 to 1.5 grams per liter of water and uh, 2 liters uh, per square meter in case of nursery yeah next slide we have an interesting product called vd green path and uh, this is a botanical extract from a plant called fungamia glabra uh, the active ingredient is karanjin here the formulation is uh, 2000 20000 ppm it's micro encapsulated liquid formulation we have not used organic solvent also it's a safe product and it really helps uh, mode of action is as insect growth regulator at the target pests are thrips spider mites jacids t mosquito bugs uh, it's recommended to be used with a adjuvant called adpro shooting uh, the next product is uh, called Veni Go Clean, which is a research product. It's a universal disinfectant, which has colloidal copper and silver. And uh, this helps in managing and uh, many of the pests. It's also advocated uh, for uh, soil drenching and it's also advocated for spraying. So it disinfects the crop and then uh, helps in managing some of the pests and diseases. Uh, sorry, some of the diseases. It's 1.25 ml to 1.5 ml per liter of water. The other product is again a biostimulant called as Venimicro, uh, which is protein hydrolysate enriched with trace element. It also helps in correction of uh, micronutrient uh, deficiencies in the crop and uh, this can be used at 2 ml per liter of water as polyester spray or drip it can be used to drip and also through soil drenching next slide yeah what i just want to conclude uh, my talk uh, basically a change in mindset in all levels is needed if we have to look at food safety in india to achieve long lasting and truly sustainable pest control that benefits people and planet and also increases profit we need to focus on improving agro ecosystem resilience this requires a thorough understanding of factors that contribute to resilience on the farm which are the some of the topics are good soil health you know we have good products for soil health management they should be adopted more and more Biodiversity conservation, this is possible when you are minimizing use of harsh chemicals. Proper management of microclimatic conditions, you know, one of the predisposing factor is, you know, management of the microclimate. If you have the climatic condition congenial for the pest, if you don't manage it well, then the pest multiplies. Then careful monitoring of pests and diseases, this is a very important factor. You know what we say is you nip it in the bud so similarly have your pest monitoring pest trapping systems in place it will help you in minimizing application of uh, pesticide you know large application of pesticide in the entire greenhouse or in the entire area where you are planted so thank you next slide so the poll question 
do you believe that sustainable crop management practices is the future for indian horticulture we are happy to say that indian horticulture production has crossed the agriculture production so if you adopt this we will have a big gap and we will be more successful your opinion please thank you so much i mean happy to note uh, that you know the presentation has been well taken we need your support and definitely we will be able to take further steps towards food safety thank you Uh, Uday, thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, that was a very lovely, uh, in-depth presentation about uh, different uh, beneficial insects that uh, the farmers can use. Uh, welcome, Mark, and good afternoon. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if anyone has any questions, they can write to me. The email ID is here. And also they can visit our website. Uh, we can give more information since the time was uh, limited to 30 minutes. I had to run through some of the slides. I mean, one to one, we can give more information in the future. And uh, the second uh, video, if it can be played uh, now, it would be excellent uh, because it's uh, road to food safety, destination. nature. I think if Iris can do it, I appreciate. Yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe they will try and sort out the technical issues uh, with the broadcast. And uh, hopefully, once that's sorted, I uh, will let you know. There were also quite a number of interesting questions <laughs> that we received, which were targeted uh, to you. Um, you talk quite a lot on uh, issues of uh, natural enemies but at the moment there are only nine uh, certified natural enemies that can be used in india uh, there was a question that uh, was highlighted uh, whose responsibility is it to lobby or to ask the government for more uh, for use of more beneficial enemies uh, and also what can be done to improve this I mean, uh, it, it should be a team effort and uh, the greenhouse growers uh, across the country, we should uh, lobby together to the government that, you know, this is a safe practice and uh, many of our growers who are back, they have worked in Africa. They know how good uh, in Africa it is adopted and uh, we should form a group and a committee and then uh, we should uh, take this up uh, with the government uh, bodies. In fact, uh, the government officials also, many of them have visited Copper in the Netherlands and they appreciate the system and no one is against it. But uh, the link between the scientific community and uh, the regulatory authorities, that gap has to be bridged. So I think uh, we need support uh, from the grower group. And, and maybe... Maybe we still have a bit of time for one more question. Uh, of course, we have a lot of questions that have come through. Uh, there was a question about use of natural enemies. Would that not offset the balance between the pests and the natural enemies if you, in, if you increase the number of natural enemies that you use on your farm? No, what happens is, you know, uh, when you use these natural enemies continuously, they maintain the balance in nature because these pests are their food. They don't have any alternate food. You know, some of uh, the natural enemies have more than two, two uh, insects which they eat. So uh, they maintain the balance in nature and uh, they are not harmful to the plants. I think that is quite clear, uh, Mark. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh, I uh, I thank you for your presentation, and I uh, I looked at the challenges, and uh, it triggered my mind that uh, the same, uh, both for Rijkswan but also for Copert, is happening in, for instance, Colombia, and uh, and uh, we see that it's a huge challenge to uh, move the governments to support this uh, development, and so uh, I would like to 
if, if there's any other government officials amongst us listening, uh, please uh, yeah, do your utmost uh, to uh, make sure that this can happen. Because uh, I think for sustainable agriculture and production in, and for safe uh, food, this is very important. And uh, yeah, it is not easy because there's a lot of regulatory uh, things that need to be taken care of, but uh, it is definitely the future. So thank you for presenting this. It's uh, it was uh, well done and very clear. Thank you thank very you. much, Udai. Thank and you. I think it's it's not just an issue about governments or lobbying against governments. I think it's also an issue of growers, traders working together with policymakers. And I think yes. one company that has done that for quite a long time now in India is uh, Rags One. And yeah. uh, I think they've been working together with growers, working together with also other companies. I think they've worked together with corporate as well on different projects. Yes. This time yes. they're also part of the Hototech India Consortium. And I think it's also nice at this moment in time to invite uh, Ajit from, Corp from uh, Rags One. Uh, and I think Ajit can share also quite an in-depth uh, discussion and also in-depth information on what uh, Rags One has been doing over the years. And I think it's also nice that we are joined by Ajit uh, Bisoy. Ajit is, uh, is, is uh, one of the managers at uh, Rags One India, uh, where he has also quite an in-depth uh, knowledge, not just working at Rags One, but also in the horticultural sector, in the fresh produce uh, sector. I think uh, with 17 years of experience, I think it would be fair to also tap into your experience, Ajit. Uh, and also for you to share with us, how can we look at food safety from the perspective of the plant, but also not just from the perspective of the plant, but also how can that be influenced within the horticultural uh, supply chain? And I think uh, it is uh, my honor to welcome you to this webinar. And um, I give the platform to you, Ajit. Uh, please proceed with your presentation. And uh, we hope that the attendees will continue to ask more questions and to engage. And we'll have discussions at the end of your presentation. Over to you, Ajit. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And very good evening to all of you, all the viewers. So uh, today we are going to discuss uh, one very important uh, chapter, which is the food safety in the complete supply chain of fruits and vegetables. That means from the uh, seed to plate, uh, which are the major areas where we can uh, try to reduce this uh, uh, safety regarding issues so that the end consumer will get a better quality food uh, uh, in or on his plate. So that is the main topic, food safety and plant management within the supply chain. Uh, then next slide, please. So before starting, uh, uh, before starting this uh, chapter, just I want to introduce a little bit about the res one. Uh, so as you know, we are uh, into the premium segment of the seeds and we are almost 25 plus crops uh, and almost more than 1200 uh, 100 and more varieties. The crops of which we are dealing with a little bit premium like uh, tomatoes, color peppers, uh, sweet palermo, snack peppers, as well as melons, lettuces, and broccoli. So we are the uh, um, world leader in the in case of the lettuces. We have very specific uh, uh, lettuces, and uh, uh, which is uh, really very interesting. I'll uh, tell you later on. So uh, this is a basically Netherlands-based company, a dealer, the head office. It is uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, since 1924, it's a very strong company culture and long-standing partnership. So uh, long-standing partnership means it's the uh, uh, a very long-term partnership with all the customers, uh, distributors, clients, whoever it may be. So uh, it's a, a holistic partnership for a long term. So basically, it is not as only commercial company, it is a techno commercial company. So from the beginning uh, of the sowing of the seeds, selection of the seeds uh, and all the agronomical practices uh, to till sale of the produces, 
so uh, end to end uh, services we are providing to our farmers or all our partners so worldwide almost 3300 plus employees are working with uh, rise one um, next slide please yeah so if we'll tell we are the number four vegetable breeding company in the world spreading about more than 100 countries out of which almost 30 countries we are having our own research and development r d facility and we are almost spending 30 percent of the annual turnover to the r d uh, and almost 40 percent of the employees are into the r d why so a uh, uh, major concentration on the r d because nowadays the breeding and uh, the situation is changing day by day so we need to have very strong r d as per the requirement of our climb uh, clients customers and taking care of the climatic conditions so all those things we need to take care and we have a better control on the final produce which is seeds after the breeding process so we are committed to contribute to the world's food supply, food safety, increase vegetable consumption through advanced R&D. And as I told, we are dealing with some specialty vegetables which are actually having low quality, uh, healthy and appealing, very much appealing. So the consumption of vegetables uh, uh, will increase day by day. So this is our uh, main uh, aim. So our, which, our contribution increased production capacity in a sustainable way. So it is nothing, everything which we are doing, it is uh, natural uh, breeding uh, and increase the crop yields uh, through this breeding process and improve the efficiency in cultivation, harvesting and processing. So what do we mean by cultivation, harvesting and processing? Like cultivation, whether it will be vertical cultivation, whether it will be horizontal cultivation. So as you know, the population is growing nowadays in a very fast pace and the land is uh, confined. We cannot increase the uh, land. So it's time has come to think for the vertical growth of the vegetables growing so that we can cater the need of the healthy vegetables in the uh, coming generations. So uh, simply, uh, similarly, if I'll tell the processing. So processing, if you know in the QSR industry, a quick service restaurant, restaurant industries like Domino's, KFC, MACD, so they have some specific instructions, uh, like they want uh, thick flesh in the capsicum and less seed. So uh, these are the demand from the customers. We, we want in this, uh, this so that the losses will be reduced. It will be a win-win situation for both the uh, parties. Uh, so according to that, we are uh, uh, breeding so that the efficiency will improve. So uh, in a short, I can tell you we are the market leader in indoor cultivation, that is greenhouse or uh, net, uh, net house cultivation. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, from uh, beginning, I'm telling that the food safety is the most important criteria uh, in the supply chain. So everybody wants a healthy food. As my friend Uday also told, ki, uh, ultimate, uh, we, everybody wants healthy, less polluted, and uh, the residue-free uh, products, right? So uh, what is the importance of a high quality seed? So seed is the key input for improving crop production and productivity. And all this has been uh, to be done through breeding, R&D. So from there, I can come to know, okay, yes, this is the requirement of my client, my customer. So I can uh, do the R&D accordingly and give the final products, which is seeds. So second one controls the maximum crop productivity, resistance to the diseases and tolerance to the environmental stress, such as drought, uh, normally hardening up. So we have to breed in such a way. We have to cross pollinate it to get, to get our desired traits in that final produce. So uh, it showed resistance to the diseases, uh, pests. So nowadays, you know, it's a major problem. Uh, and this is uh, pest and diseases. So we, we have to breed accordingly. So which is resistant to those crop pests in that particular location. So that also we need to uh, consider. 
and third is crucial in improving farm hold food security so if i can increase the productivity uh, so it helps me uh, in the food security uh, then obtaining the best results so in the seeds goes hand in hand with crop uh, using the use of the new technology so whatever i am doing research here the seed is the only medium where i can prove it i can show it to the farmers so overall i can uh, tell you if i am selecting the good quality seed and if the seed is the foundation so if i am selecting good quality uh, about 50 to 60% of your problems will be resolved right next slide slide please yeah so the what is the importance of breeding in the uh, food safety so already i told the seeds are the um, uh, utmost uh, criteria uh, and these seeds we are getting from breeding only so what i need what is the requirement all those will come from the breeding so it improve quality like increased nutrition improved flavor tss self life so what is my requirement suppose i want to increase some nutrients in the particular crop so i need to check which is the uh, productivity wise the good variety and which is the nutrition wise very good so i need to cross pollinate it and get the desired traits like suppose i want to export something uh, for a long distance so there i need to know the tss content of that product so that the self life will get increased right so uh, similarly if somebody wants to you know in melons i want more sweetness so there also we can get it through this breeding only and uh, increased yield of crops which is uh, related to food security so from breeding we can get the good quality seeds which will increase your production and productivity as per the locations then focus on resistances to reduce the use of crop rotation this is most important uh, part of the breeding so as uh, uh, udai told ki nowadays everybody wants a residue free and uh, good quality produce so this is uh, if i am breeding something which uh, uh, require less crop protection uh, like uh, pesticide insecticide application so definitely the farmer will get a good produce with low cost of cultivation and which ultimately a, giving a more benefits or more realization and the next one is develop new cultivation system what i told vertical and hydroponic uh, so hydroponic is nothing but a water based uh, cultivation system where we are not using the this cross crop protection method so it is mainly popular in the leafy vegetables like lettuces and spinach so uh, nowadays everybody is uh, going towards this hydroponic because it is a residue residue free cultivation and uh, uh, we can tell it organic though it is still in uh, in debate whether hydroponics are uh, organic or not but still though we are not using the soil uh, so no uh, soil borne diseases will be there so uh, ultimately this is better as compared to uh, soil uh, cultivation so next one is increase tolerance to environmental pressures means we can change the traits uh, as per the uh, uh, our requirement like we want to uh, make it temperature resistance right drought resistance so we have to do the trialing after poly cross pollination we have to do trialing again and again and finally we have to uh, get the our desirable traits in the seeds uh, one example i can give you the blue leaf variety uh, of cucumber so in this blue leaf variety which rajwan has developed it's a uh, very good for photosynthetic activity because the leaves are uh, a blue combination of green and blue the roots are very strong so the absorption of nutrients uh it it helps in good absorption of the nutrients uh, into the system plant system and third one the productive and uh, generative and there is a balance so uh, in this variety it is we are maintaining that 
so sim similarly salnova variety of lettuces it is a single head lettuce one cut we can uh, harvest it so there is a very less contact uh, of, with the produce because in other varieties of lettuces uh, it is multiple cutting so if you will reduce that definitely it will help in the uh, getting a better produce next slide please so uh, this breeding is uh, helping uh, climate smart agriculture and precision farming so really it's uh, very uh, high tech farming which i'll describe in my in next slides so uh, so this is the com uh, complete chain from seed to plate so as a as one seeds uh shown here are uh, raise one uh so the this is the first step this is the foundation so if i can control its each stages if i need to do what so that the contamination contamination percentage will be reduced though we cannot 100 percent uh, do this but it can be reduced by doing some steps at different stages so the consumer will get a fair quality consumable products so uh, next slide please yeah so uh, what are the emerging food safety issues so main issue is the residues and contaminants so everybody is talking about pesticides residues toxins adulteration i'm giving you a simple example uh, if uh, uh, you can know you know about this pointed gold purple and green peach so everybody wants it in green color so what uh, some vendors or some um, uh, sellers what they are doing they are mixing with the green color right so it will look green and they will sell at a higher price similarly uh, in brinjal so they are polishing it with some oil so it will give you a, a good look and people will buy at a better price and similarly other items also uh, this type of adulteration is still going on so this all this we need to uh, stop so uh, how to these pathogens and spoilage microorganisms like bacteria so these are the main criteria and main agents for this food safety issue and for this contamination and though all the bacteria are not harmful there are some useful bacteria also there so again production practices where where i am producing what is the condition of the and quality of the water like in processing when where i am processing for the uh, cut veg so what is the quality of that water and what temperature i am uh, treating the produces and uh, washing the produces with this water so all these test facilities this all we need to uh, check so that we can avoid this contamination and food adulteration issues uh, similarly infrastructure uh, like testing cold chain pack house so pack house why i have mentioned uh, because uh, while you are doing some packaging of this cut vegetable or whole vegetables so you need to see the room should be the area where you are packing it should be actually closed and in controlled temperature so there are some instructions some guidelines so that the dust cannot enter into the packets uh, because in cut vegetables it is directly going to your mouth consumer's mouth so like iso 22000 which is related to food safety uh, we are uh, the best companies uh, who are at most taking care for this hygiene part they are already applying this iso 20000 and hscp so uh, these are the some uh, things or uh, control measures we need to take for the uh, this food safety issues next slide, slide please yeah uh, so uh, food safety standards so uh, in a layman word uh, what is the end criteria of the produce that is most important for me for a consumer okay how i am getting that and what is the criteria as it is is it matching with my criteria or not it is looking what uh, i want the shape and the size texture so this is all related to the end product so uh, and how i will get this mainly the hygienic practice for the fresh fruits and vegetable so the from the uh, 
see up to production it's all depends on the quality of the seeds agronomical practices and how you are applying the crop protection in a optimum way then once it will be harvested then you have to take care this post harvest technology sorry uh, so post harvest technology uh, it will reduce the losses between the uh, harvest and uh, consumer the time duration it will reduce your losses and definitely it will keep the nutrition intact so these are some things we need to follow so that it will reach our customer in a very safe manner and the next one is mrls for pesticide and chemicals it's a really very interesting uh, term mrl so maximum residue limits if you are exporting it is compulsory but in domestic use nobody is so much thinking about this mrls right so what is this so it is the maximum residue level available after the harvest harvesting of the crops so after doing a lot of field trial we are getting this mrl level with good agricultural practices right so when you will harvest the produce there should be zero pesticide but which is practical uh, not possible and still after harvesting also there are some residues of these pesticides why uh, is it so because there are actually two type of pesticides systemic and contact so nowadays what farmers are doing uh, they are using mostly this systemic pesticides which will go inside the system of the plant right why they are doing so because it's it is uh, low manpower use and for a long duration the effect will be there because if there will be rain and uh, uh, anything then this contact insecticide and pesticides will go up. so they knowingly do this so that the effect will be for a longer duration as well as the cost of labor cost will be reduced so all these practices are not really good whoever my farmer friends are listening i think they know it uh, and uh, uh, next one is food additives additives means which is give you a better taste good look texture to your food right so these are also you have to add in a permissible limit not more than that uh, like the same contaminant limits like chemical contaminants so what will be the uh, percentage uh, so all these things everybody should have a proper knowledge while producing or processing something so that we can avoid the uh, food safety issues and the next is packaging and labeling which are biodegradable package which is accepted by the society or uh, by the uh, uh, government uh, which is degraded biodegradable so in the, this concept, uh, context we have to think also similarly labeling so we are using the stickers uh, for the labeling or branding of a company right so in that level also it should be food grade right then only uh, we can check check it is safe so next one is inspection sampling testing procedures and methods it's the, the as i told already there are a lot of agencies organization are there who are having the methods sops standard operation procedures yes if we will do like this then we will get uh, get the desired results okay some uh, organizations are there who can only guide you at different points yes this point we need to track this this point we need to track this but uh, some other organization are there who are more uh, related to the end product which is ultimate uh, aim the end product should be uh, residue free less pollutant and safe next slide please yeah so uh, now uh, how is the food trends if i'll see uh, everybody demands uh, we want uh, safe food so what is safe food so safe food means there should not be any adulteration there should not be any residue so all these are safe food so how so it ultimately going to again breeding part what uh, rizwan is doing to uh, more
mostly uh, about this uh, issues like low residue free, uh, less crop protection chemicals, so that the ultimate product will be uh, uh, quality wise, it will be good. So similarly, nowadays the organic, organic products uh, market is growing in a very bigger way because uh, everybody is caring towards uh, health, wellness. So though it is little bit premium, but still there is a shift from the uh, chemical to uh, organic products. And uh, Rajwan is having a broad range of organic assort assortment too. Uh, and we are doing it, the strict compliance with safety requirements as per that particular country or particular location. Uh, then developing new cultivation method and system together with the partners. So in organic market, uh, slowly, I think in coming years, it will be a, a major market in India. And the next point is traceability of the food. Uh, listen, this is the most important criteria for a premiumness, uh, or if you are telling my product is uh, organic, and it is from this place, that place, this farmer. So this is the transparency. So what is traceability? So the, if uh, some of you can see uh, in some food packets, there is a QR code. If you will scan it, it will give you the details like which seed, which area, who is the farmer, when he has sown the seed, when he has applied pesticide and how much all the details step by step it will come after you scan this code right so till consumer plate it will show you when it has harvested at what time harvested and how much time it took to reach the final consumer's hand so this if we can press it so it will give you a detail thinking whether your produce is safe or unsafe right so uh, this is the, some new concept now uh, coming up so that for that produce definitely customer is ready to pay a better price because he knows he, yes this is the produce from where it came and how is the quality right so this is the premiumness and local for local uh, so uh, uh, breeding in india for india what we are doing at raise one next slide please yeah, so uh, that's what uh, what uh, the supply chain I have shown you in my previous slide. Uh, now this is uh, there are four steps where we need to control after uh, har har harvesting of the crops. So first step, uh, what is in grower or field operations? Here we have to follow good ag agricultural practices, and uh, it is very much clear from the previous presentation from Uday, uh, okay, how beautifully you can manage with uh, integrated uh, this pest management, your nutrient management, growth regulators, so everything should be natural. So ultimately, uh, selection of the seeds, which variety we are going to uh, grow, and so what is the soil condition. So everything uh, he uh, clearly told us, okay, how we will get a better food uh it will go for as for the copper right so second one is indoor cultivation and traceability so if i'm going for greenhouse or indoor cultivation definitely i have more control than outdoor cultivation how because i know when i have sown the seeds so i have a schedule also it, this 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 days we need to apply these this this things in inputs chemicals so uh, and fertilizers. So it is in an optimum manner, not haphazardly. He, I'll uh, throw one bag or like that. No, there is a limitation and there is a schedule and how to apply, when to apply, how much to apply. Right. Then I know everything, then my labor cost will be also less. I need lo less labor so as compared to open field. So if you'll see, I have a completely traceability of the things. And that's why it will be more safer than outdoor cultivation right so after that we can come to post harvest management so how to uh, increase the self life reduce the loss keep the nutrients intact with the crop till it goes to the uh, consumer so all those things we need to follow so we'll get a 
better quality produce and next when after harvesting it comes to the trader or processor right or wholesaler we can say so they are they also need to follow some process like iso certification so uh, iso certification it is the uh, organization for standardization international organization so they are making the rules guidelines they themselves not certified the things so some third party will certify it but as per iso guidelines right so uh, and iso 22000 is majorly related to food safety so uh, and hygiene parameters if i am uh, storing some produces after harvesting as a uh, trader or processor i need to follow certain hygiene parameters also like uh, uh, there should be no uh, insect paste in the warehouse or go down there should be rat controllers so all those things we need to see like i told already packaging and labeling standard that also should be food grade standard randomly i cannot put any stickers of any standard which are not the food grade standard and hscp so hscp is hazards analysis at critical control points so uh, here uh, uh, i have to check at different points how to avoid this uh, contaminations related to the food safety so this is a process oriented but in the final produce uh, i don't have any control but throughout the process i need to control it but with respect to iso it is a final product uh, controller you, you i hope you got the difference both are processes and related to food safety but iso more uh, emphasize on the end product whereas hscp is more into the process then there is some fda food codes like how much caffeine will be in the coffee so, so that also organizations are defining so we need to follow all these things to make the produce safety next slide please yeah so next is once harvested go to retailers or wholesaler or processors then is it is retailers so there are certain sops standard operation procedures to follow at the retail point of view also and along with the fssi license if you are doing food business you need to get this license compulsory from local level district level or uh, country level so there are three steps so you can go online and what you are doing how much the turnover according to that you have to apply for the license and it is a must for all the food uh, business right then packaged veggies specs expiry products this is uh, one most important criteria uh, when some packs you have seen in the retailers uh, earlier where there is no packaging date no expiry date it it is a must as per the uh, compilation of uh, uh, the uh, procedure and uh, licenses so you must have to print the packaging date use by date or uh, uh, expiry date uh, most of uh, uh, the retailers now following this is a mandatory uh, compliance in the food safety and regulation then storage sanitization so we need to sanitize or clean our uh, display or uh, where i am storing it uh, i have to give this uh, pest control measures to avoid the rats and all those things because if it will contain contaminate uh, then definitely it will uh, result in a very serious food safety issue uh, so and the handling of cut veggies how to handle that uh, because it is directly going to the consumer's mouth so in this case which uh, the retailers and all are should be very strict and should follow the procedures uh, then ultimately it is consumer so uh, if you will see most of the consumers nowadays are very much attentive yes while buying a milk or vegetable packet or anything if it is packed then first they will check the last line of the self of a retailer 
because uh, it is uh, first in first out principle uh, all are uh, maintaining so uh, what uh, a consumer will think who, which are in the last site then definitely the self life will be more there and the expiry date uh, will be uh, more so that he will get a long time to consume that produce so uh, this is a more important criteria when you are procuring anything in a packed form you should check the uh, expiry date or packaging date first and refrigerate the perishable items uh, we cannot keep the perishable items uh, like outside if i am taking uh, some milk paneer and vegetables uh, exotic vegetables so it needs uh, temperature control or refrigerator storage so we need to follow that or if i'll putting broccoli outside that if the temperature will be high it turns yellowish okay so that is the uh, loss of nutri nutrition so the, all these things small small things we need to take care next keep cut fruits and vegetables in tight plastic box so there will be no contamination i cannot keep it outside like this so flies will come and eat it so uh, there will be chances for contamination so we need to follow this and keep as per the weight in the bags it is a very common thing so heavy items down then lighter lightest right but sometimes we see everybody is mixing uh, heavy items top of the leafy items so ultimately that is the uh, related to the food safety or contamination of your food items and properly cleaning uh, thoroughly cooking keeping uh, sideways uh, cooked product raw product huge uh, or good water good raw material so all are small small things uh, through which we can uh, avoid all these contaminations and keep our uh, food uh, safer uh, next slide, slide please yeah uh, so what is the role of the public sector uh, government and private sector organization to enhance food safety standards in the chain uh, how uh, how is their role so you know so most of the state government agencies are there who are guiding directly or indirectly uh, regarding the this cultivation practices and other things uh, similarly so they are producing some certification agencies are there uh, they can certify it yes this is you can tell organic this is a low residue and this type of certification agencies are there even if APEDA is helping in export by certifying the products uh, national horticulture, horticulture board horticulture mission so government organization are there they are directly or indirectly guiding the farmers exporters processors key how to get a safe food better food right then quality control labs are there hscp fssi so all are helping we need to follow them i am doing some food business means i have to take the fssi license if i am not uh, overlooking it i'm not getting it so it is uh, a loss not only to me it is a loss to all the consumers so that we need to think yes i'm doing some business food business means what are the first guidelines what are the rules we have i have to follow so that is our nest should come from my side only i cannot uh, tell key okay i'm not eating i'm uh, selling the foods to end consumer uh let whatever happens happen so th this type of thinking we need to change right so uh currently uh, our government has announced one nation one market concept which is really fantastic concept uh i can appreciate it because uh now the farmers have more options he where he wants to sell he will sell it right earlier it was through apmc but now he can sell anywhere and so many uh, online platforms are also there nowadays uh, enam neml so uh, through these platforms also he can sell easily and the uh, biggest uh, positive point what i can see here uh, everybody wants the reduce the harvesting time I mean, this uh, gestation period from harvesting to uh, end consumer plate right so if i'll sell through with somebody like through apmc or where there is specific timing right i have to take my product at that particular time so that it can be get sold but here if i want to direct sell to some retailers directly uh, i'm giving you some examples of this leafy item so mostly retailers 
opens their store at 7 a.m. in the morning, right? So I need the Liffy items as a retailer, night 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock, which is looks fresh at the morning and the time of harvesting to consumer will be reduced. So in that way, we can protect the nutritional values and freshness. Uh, so this one nation, one market concept will definitely help them to get a better quality produce because we can reduce the gestation time. And uh, next one is a good initiative is contract farming. So uh, as you know, the most of the farmers in India are small farmers. So if uh, they will get this technical know-how, how, when, what, why, where. So all these uh, uh, questions will be clear. Then definitely I can tell you they will earn a better price uh, because uh, the corporates or whoever uh, will be the contractor definitely they want to get a better quality produce out of this farm farmlands and farmers so that definitely it will help help the farmers uh, to achieve the criteria of this food safety because they will follow all the steps uh, provided technical know-how provided to them so that they will improve their uh, productivity too and secondly private sector organizations as we know nowadays uh, in india almost 450 plus startups are there who are working with the artificial intelligence uh, precision farming uh, so what is this artificial intelligence so uh, this actually with the help of the drones robots and strong compute system they can uh, forecast yes uh, in some days uh, this insect or pest will be infect your crop so it is uh, they can tell you uh, before so that you can take the step right so the, the, this is one thing secondly uh, water management so how much uh, optimum use of the water so the, they can tell you right so all these things uh, increase the productivity too okay, at what time what thing you have to supply to your nutrients supply to your plants so that they will give you the good quality and best productivity so most of the startups nowadays they are working on this uh, ai artificial intelligence and traceability as i have already told they are helping now uh, uh, most of the uh, this uh, private sector they are now trying for this traceability uh, concept so that the price relation will be more and the transparency in the system will be good and it will lead to ultimately the food safety then um, apios Farmers, producer organizations are there who are helping a lot uh, uh, to the farmers, growers, or farmer friends uh, to how to um, uh, go for this uh, selection of inputs, selection of seeds, how to uh, uh, go for this agronomical practices and selling of their producers. So that they are also helping a lot to the our farmers. Uh, then different seminars, trainings, capacity building uh, platforms are there. So I, I, these private organizations uh, are doing this so that the knowledge of the farmers regarding the food safety, not only farmers, everybody in the chain, all the stakeholders of the chain, starting from the seed company to consumer and consumer, it will uh, lead to the greater food safety. So like this here also, this is a platform. I definitely thank you the uh, organizers because the, in this way we can share our knowledge and uh, lead to a better tomorrow. Uh, so with this, uh, I am finishing my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ayit. Thank it's you. a wonderful presentation. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Um, yes, no, uh, wonderful presentation. And I think uh, it also shows uh, the connection with uh, corporate's previous pe presentation and how uh, if we want to move forward, companies and organizations and authorities need to work together together with the growers right. and uh, everything else um, right. are there any questions uh, Daniel well I think uh, first and foremost I would like to thank Ajit for his uh, presentation as he was speaking I was thinking about one exchange that I had with one of your colleagues uh, he was uh, his name is uh, Pratab Rana uh, he works for Rags One India yeah, he's my colleague. He, yeah. 
yes, he informed me that one of their themes that they use at Rikes One is to provide solutions to farmers. Uh, they see themselves, Rikes One sees itself as itself as a uh, solution provider to farmers. And, and talking about food safety, uh, what kind of uh, breeding practices are currently being done at Rikes One? to reduce the use of pesticides. Are you in any way involved in breeding to reduce the use of pesticides at the moment? Yeah, so uh, that already I have uh, told you in my presentation, Raise One is always trying to develop such varieties which are mostly resistance to the pesticides and sorry, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pesticides and the diseases. So mostly to the diseases. So if I am uh, developing some uh, resistance variety to a particular diseases, so they, ultimately the crop protection system, I have to use uh, less uh, insecticide or chemicals uh, because it is a resistance variety. So in this way, we are just developing the uh, seeds quality so that it will consume less crop protection materials. So it is a continuous process with the raised one so that we can uh, avoid this crop protection uh, chemicals in near future. Okay, great. Yes, um, one of the things that uh, we, due to time, we uh, have to uh, be a little bit, uh, yeah, watch the time in terms of questions. Are there, uh, because we still want to show the video that uh, we couldn't show earlier uh, on food safety and, I don't know if there's any other questions, uh, Daniel, that we can uh, still do, or otherwise we go over and uh, we watch the video quickly. And then after that, uh, Uday, uh, he will join us as well. Okay, uh, there was one more question that was asked about the use of hydroponics in crop production. Um, yeah. There was a question that uh, use of hydroponics would it not influence uh, the availability of nutrients for for crops. Thus, uh, as a result, maybe farmers needing to use more um, more fertilizers. Uh, what do you say to that? So uh, I have already told it is a medium to grow the crop uh, with the help of water system, right? So here, uh, see soil borne diseases. If I am growing in the soil, so there are chances of soil borne diseases. Uh, so there we are using the chemicals and what my friend uh, the plant will take the all desired nutrients hello okay I, I think we lost you a bit and we couldn't hear you and uh, mm -hmm. hello yeah perhaps you yeah. can repeat uh, the answer we lost you a bit Yeah, so you can use the organic things uh, so that it will take the nutrients from the water system. So if required, we can use that. But still, we have seen most of the hydroponic growers. It's uh, no use, absolutely no use or less use of the nutrients. Okay, okay. Um, Mark, shall we quickly go to the video while it's, uh, uh, Uda, yes. while it's uh, also Udai join us? Yeah, and then after that... Uh... Be be with. This is. Uh, it takes a little time, but it's coming. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a video that uh, Udai uh, kindly requested that we present to everyone during this webinar, so that maybe people can actually see the pathways.
I think uh, firstly, we would like to apologize for technical difficulties that we have been having with showing the videos in this webinar. Um, but uh, hopefully in the coming, uh, hopefully we'll be able to resolve it for other webinars that <coughs> will follow. Um, Mark, shall we quickly go into uh, a panel discussion before we yes. wrap this webinar up? Yes, so if Uday and Ajit can join us, are you still there? Yes, great. Excellent. Um, maybe shall I start? So I think Uday and Ajit, thank you very much for your wonderful presentations. I think it was they were quite informative. A lot of people found them very interesting. Um, the question that comes up when we were looking at your presentation, Uday, is are there possibilities of using uh, beneficial insects that are found locally in uh, India? Are we able to, are there possibilities of having local solutions that can be provided? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, local solutions are always most welcome, but at this moment, there are uh, not many local solutions available. They, the country claims uh, to have about 400 biocontrol laboratories under government of India, but uh, they are not able to provide the required uh, number of beneficial insects. So that's the reason uh, initially it has to be imports, but subsequently when the volumes increase, the local production is the long-term solution. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, maybe for Ajit, at the moment, there's a lot of progress being seen in the world of breeding. Um, we, we see a lot of advancement happening, uh, but also we see also the coming up of GMOs. Um, mm. uh, what is Reichs One doing about it to protect the safety of the consumer in terms of from a breeding perspective? Uh, see, if we'll discuss about GMO, it is not the natural way. Okay, so we at Rizwan, everything we are doing uh, naturally. So it is open uh, cross pollination with the varieties to get the uh, desired traits. So uh, as you know, 2006 7 actually, uh, uh, our government introduced uh, the GMO uh, like BT dangerous, and after that, there were some issues and they stopped it. And recently again also uh, they want to start it but it all about the awareness uh, to the consumer uh, towards the food safety he if you are getting something natural way and there is some uh, modified genetical modified way then they, you know to uh, decide uh, which is safer like uh, nowadays everything what this uh, i told all the needs or uh, natural things like oh, they told he had, uh, not, Everything should be in a natural way. So it is a completely awareness among the people whether they will go for the uh, natural way or in a genetical modified way. Okay. And uh, there's quite a lot of work being done by the Food, food Safety and Standards Association of India in line with food safety. Are your organizations working together with the Food Safety and Standards Organization? I think I'll first we'll ask uh, Uday. <laughs> yeah. uh, th there's a lot going on, a lot of standards yeah. being uh, yeah. the Food and Safety, Food Safety and Standards Association of India is doing a lot to protect the consumer. Uh, are you no. also working together with the Food Safety and Standards Association? Yes. In fact, you know, uh, some of our products are, uh, you know, certified, certified for organic uh, agriculture. Basically, it's an organic input certification which is done uh, by certain recognized bodies under APEDA. So uh, we have, because these products are safe, they have been registered under that and they can be used by the farmers as safe products. Well, I think because of time, uh, we cannot uh, continue having this discussion, I think, Mark. Um, 
is I think we have to hand it over to Davinia and thank you very much for the organization of these webinars. And uh, thank you very much for our panelists who have been able to join us. Thank you very much for the attendees. Uh, over to you, Davinia. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Mark, um, Uday, and Ajit. Um, first of all, I also want to thank the uh, Dutch Embassy in Delhi, and I would like to thank the Netherlands Enterprise Agency for making it possible that we had this series of three webinars. Um, uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, me, myself, I learned a lot, um, and I think it's a very important theme, uh, food safety. So I really hope we can continue with what, what we have been doing. Um, I'm very pleased to see that we have so many people in the room today uh, from Knowledge Institute, but also government, uh, the horticulture sector. And um, I really want to invite you to team up with us, to team up with the companies of Hortitech India, to team up with the Netherlands. Uh, we are a very small country, but we have a lot of knowledge about uh, growing uh, safe and healthy food. So please, um, if you want to uh, uh, further work with us, send us an email and um, we will also further brainstorm how we could transfer our knowledge uh, to the Indian horticulture sector. So for now, thank you very much. Um, have a good evening and we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Namaste.